We've got a disaster response route along here. Wow. I, can you imagine if there was a disaster? Now, I know that Vancouver does all these little uh, hurricane, or not hurricane, but uh, earthquake drills, you know, like what would happen in an, er in an earthquake and how you can get help and stuff. Man, if an earthquake hit here, any that would do major damage, this place would disintegrate. It would fall into utter chaos faster than you can wag a stick at it. I mean, if, if just rain causes this kind of uh, traffic tie-up, snarl, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, imagine if there was, like I said, an earthquake. This place would just be in an utter chaos. And that's just way out here. I mean, we're way out of the downtown area. You get an earthquake happening, shake off some of the bridges like Lionsgate, Burrard, or what, Granville, whatever, and uh, rattle the hell out of those downtown high-rises. Vancouver would be just chaos central and they're still building a lot of buildings in Vancouver that have all these glass on the sidewalks and stuff like that when we've seen how dangerous that can be when glass starts falling but that's a whole different issue anyway when they put out signs about uh, disaster relief travel or whatever then you got to start thinking about stuff like that I made that video uh, almost a year ago and a lot of it has to do with common sense. I mean, we've known for a long time that uh, the west coast of North America, as a matter of fact, all of the Americas from uh, Chile all the way up to uh, Alaska is due for a major earthquake. And we just had the one in uh, Napa Valley and San Francisco Bay Area uh, a day ago. So the thing isn't about if we're going to get an earthquake, what but when, and you see these major cities and how built up they are uncongested. They're very beautiful, attract people from around the world, but they are due for an earthquake. And uh, uh, all I can say about that is that there's no amount of preparedness that will get us ready for when it happens. And that in the same token, we shouldn't live our lives cowering away, hiding in some room, waiting for the big one to come. still worthwhile to get out, enjoy life, see the beauty of it. But we also shouldn't be misled by governments and other groups and organizations that there is real earthquake preparedness taking place because nothing can prepare us for an earthquake. It's that simple. You know, I've seen the first responders have their little drills when they're on the street and they put people into band-aids and uh, uh, bandage them up for transport, you know, stop the bleeding from pretend injuries. Well, the fact of the matter is, in a real earthquake, it's not pretend. And the other fact of the matter is, in a real earthquake, you don't know when it strikes. This one in San Francisco and Napa Valley area struck during the middle of the night. People were asleep. They were at home, fortunately. But what happens if an earthquake comes, uh, in the morning, you're on the way to work. Your kids are in school. Your wife's at home. You have your earthquake preparedness stuff at home. You got your uh, clean drinking water. You have batteries for your transistor radio. You have uh, non-perishable food products. But your family is all over the place. What happens if it comes when you're on a vacation? You know, you've traveled away from your, your home. You're staying in a hotel. Cindy and I are traveling a lot. We stay in hotels in Vancouver, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, LA, whatever. We're on the road. I refuse to live my life in fear. It doesn't matter if it's to do with ISIS and, you know, Rick Perry saying that, well, you know, the ISIS fighters could have come up through Mexico or the te Texas border. Give me a break, you know, don't try scaring people. I use common sense. I realize something can happen at any time. It can be a car accident, you could fall in the bathtub. I'm not going to live my life in fear. And I'm not going to be fooled by people that want to fool me into thinking that it's all good and all safe. I know it's not. If a major earthquake strikes this city, it's going to be hell. It's going to be hell for the people living there. 
And in that regard, I do put a lot of blame on the government and the cities and municipalities, the developers, because they continue to build things that they know represent a danger to people. All the glass on the buildings, we know it's, it's dangerous. As a matter of fact, if you listen to the news, a lot of the injuries in Napa Valley and in San Francisco area that people that were injured happened because of broken glass. It's not rocket science. It's common sense. So easy to know and see. A lot of the damage or injuries happen because of falling debris, bricks, whether it's on uh, facade of buildings or if it's chimneys or whatever. All kinds of things that are suspended tend to fall when they're shaken, especially violently. It's not rocket science. The cities could be built safer. And I tell you, it doesn't have to be that, you know, somebody expert comes out and says, well, we've engineered the cities to withstand the earthquake and we know that the glass isn't going to fall out. It's not about a, a building becoming a shell of its former self. One large sheet of glass falling down can do unbelievable damage. And I don't give a rat's behind about what experts say they have engineered. Experts are continually phenomenally wrong on these uh, things. If you take a look at experts, there's not one that would have predicted that uh, Fukushima in Japan would have happened. Because that, it's not going to happen. It's safe. Nuclear reactors are safe. Nuclear energy is the safest energy there is. And by the way, Joe, do you know that it wasn't an earthquake that caused the damage at Fukushima? It was a tsunami that was a result of the earthquake? Well, hello, it don't matter. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what caused it. The fact of the matter is it was damaged. It caused a meltdown. And it wasn't the earthquake shaking that caused the loss of life of up to 20,000 people in Japan. It was a tsunami, but it was a result of the earthquake. We don't have to argue about semantics about it was this or it was that. It's kind of like uh, New Orleans and the insurance companies. Was it a hurricane that caused the damage or the flooding? What do you have insurance for? You know, give me a break. But here's the other thing. And uh, it's, this isn't about scaring people. But the fact of the matter is, is that this century already in the last 14 years that we've been in the century, the first 14 years, the loss of lives because of earthquakes have been phenomenal. I've mentioned uh, Japan already, Fukushima, but let's not forget about Thailand and the uh, Asian area where that was struck by the earthquake underwater that caused a large chunk of land to slip, again creating a major tidal wave and the loss of some 200 to 250,000 lives instantly. And it's not just about Asia, man. Who would think? I mean, we all love to go vacationing in the Caribbean. Caribbean, you know, you got uh, Dominican Republic, you got uh, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, uh, all the beautiful Caribbean islands, including for Canadians, Cuba. And there was a major earthquake there impacting Haiti. It was their unlucky time. And that cost the lives of some 250,000 people. It wasn't done predominantly by a tidal wave, but buildings collapsing. Entire neighborhoods wiped out. Hotels, you name it, everything wiped out. 250,000 people, and many of those people, even after billions of dollars were gathered, and there were all kinds of charity events and governments pledging money, Many people still live in tents with crime and disease constant. So I'm not trying to scare people. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, you, you can't live cowering away from everything. You've got to live. But if we are going to be misled by governments or agencies that there is preparedness you can do for it, hell no. And even if they could predict an earthquake is coming, you know, there's the latest equipment out there, seismologists and whatever, all these people have come up with a way to predict earthquakes and they're going to tell you that 
there's one coming in an hour and a half or two hours, a major quake. You think they would want to tell people about it? You wouldn't be able to use your phone. It'd be so congested. Internet would go down. And, you know, you got double-decked highways and uh, stuff like that. I mean, if you've ever been in Vancouver traffic during a traffic jam and there's one accident, or in Seattle when it's raining trying to leave the city, any big city, the, the roads would be clogged within five minutes. There'd be nobody going. And in the states where people have guns, man, that's the last thing I'd want to be is, you know, on the roads uh, clogging traffic. Road rage? Hell yeah. I mean, take a look at again what happened in uh, New Orleans after the flooding from the uh, hurricane. Even in shelters where people were supposed to be saved. I think we really screwed up bringing a lot of the people into cities. City life. Now, I know we can't always all be spread out over the land, but I think cities will become... Well, we've traveled a lot down in Mexico, home of the Mayans. And at one time, the Mayans had amazing cities, absolutely amazing. I mean, you think back that thousands of years ago, they had cities that had populations of 10, 20, 50,000 or more people living in the cities with infrastructure. They had streets, they had buildings, arenas for sporting, sporting events, all kinds of different things. They had observatories for studying the planets, the heavens. There were scientists, mathematicians, and they were so advanced. And then one by one they started leaving the cities. And today scientists are still speculating. Was it war that drove them away from there? Was it famine that they just couldn't supply the food for their cities? Was it disease? There's a lot of speculation, there's a lot of theories, but nothing definitive. And I think, you know, when you take a look around the world right now, whether it's a um, major uh, environmental incident, let's say like an earthquake, a natural disaster, or a disease breaking out, like what's happening with Ebola. In Africa, there's a city where the people have been locked in now. They've got barbed wire fence and military and police encircling them. People can't come out because it's infected with Ebola and not even to the point where like you know there's tens of thousands of cases they just don't want those people out so they're giving them food and water through the gates this is like the worst science fiction movie you could imagine from back in the 70s and 80s you know LA or whatever zombies crime everything rampant so imagine what would happen if there's a major disease outbreak in one of these large cities Could it happen that in North America would blockade the cities and not let people out? I mean, again, I'm not scaring people, but if you're going to use common sense, you're going to start thinking about things, the answers are all out there. All we have to do is look around the world and see. See what happens in other areas. What are the issues? And realize that we're not immune from any of that stuff, even to the point of asking about the militarization of police in the United States. Why do they have all that military equipment? Why do they come into like they did in Ferguson or you saw that in Boston, shutting down a city? Again, not scare tactics. Use common sense, figure things out. And one other big issue that I have with cities is that getting older and having issues with my knee, I saw what happened in New York with Hurricane Sandy. And when the power is lost, which has happened now in Napa, and uh, San Francisco area, when the water lines are broken, you don't have water going up into the buildings. If you're living on a 20th, 30th, 50th floor, you got to use the stairs coming up and down in the dark. But the worst aspect of it is, is that the water lines are broken. It's happened down in California, and they've said that some places might take a week for them to be repaired. You can't have a shower, you can't have a drink, you can't flush your toilet. And even if you feel safe in your uh, apartment, somehow someone has to get water to you if there's people around to do so.
Now, if you're older and you've been using the elevators coming up and down because you've got problems with mobility, what would it be like to walk down 20, 30 flights of stairs? And then you have nowhere else to go like many people in uh, the New York area didn't have any other places to go after the uh, hurricane. You've got to walk back up the stairs. Look at these cities, how congested they are. And by world standard, world class, they're not even that big. Take a look at Tokyo, Hong Kong. You want to talk about real big coastal cities? I love traveling, I love exploring the new things, I love using my head and thinking about stuff and uh, even talking about it on YouTube and hoping to get more people thinking and having a conversation. Don't leave it in the hands of politicians and experts and uh, you know people that have a vested interest in stuff. Get out and marvel at the beauty and, and marvel at the way that we have brought things together, that these huge cities can provide water, sanitation, food, everything for people, but also realize that it might not be the best way. Thank you for watching our videos. And we're going to continue on with Seattle before taking a quick jaunt into the San Francisco Bay Area, San Francisco cable car rides. It is... Uh, Classic San Francisco, beautiful buildings, and when we get to San Francisco, and you take a look at the beginning, and there's all the cars parked along the curb, take a look at their front wheels, because they're all aiming into the curb, because San Francisco is built on so many hills, that uh, if it was shaken, and your car's wheels aren't up to the curb, your parking brake gives out, all the vehicles will be rolling downhill. It's something that I didn't realize when we were there. It just that this morning when I was editing the video and I was looking at it, I go, holy smokes, look at all those wheels. Like I said, we can learn so much just by observing. Looking, watching, listening to other people, and using common sense. Thank you again.
we could have ridden down. We did that before. We didn't walk down here.